Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking about how you take your seedlings from where they've started as seeds to where they're gonna go to keep growing. So I have here uh, a little pottle of quite leggy bok choy. We're gonna talk about why it's leggy in a moment. And I also have some tomatoes. So that's what we're gonna look at potting on today. So we're just gonna get right in and get started. Now, my bok choy here, it is leggy because in the winter time, and you're starting your seeds inside because you need the warmer temperature, there's always a trade-off between light and warmth. So the bok choy, I decided warmth was more important than absolute optimal light. So that's why it's just gotten a bit leggy, which just means it's growing very tall because it's trying to reach the light that it didn't quite have enough of. But it's totally fine. There is nothing wrong with it and it's still gonna be just as successful. It's just those winter, summer, getting ready trade-offs you need to make. So let's go ahead and get them potted on. You want to be very, very gentle with your little baby plants. They're not robust yet, so you want to be very careful while you're handling them. With my greens, I always pop them into just whatever I have floating around. So I like to use these plastic six trays for that. And I, I like to use these because they're nice and small and then the greens are gonna go straight from this size out into the garden. I do something a bit different with my tomatoes and peppers and I'm gonna show you that when we get there. So I am just popping a little bit of potting on mix into the tray. Because these are leggy, I'm gonna fill the mix in around them. I'm not going to fill that puddle all the way up because then I might damage their roots while I'm trying to put them in. So we're just gonna take each plant very, very gently, pop it nice and deep in the tray because we want to make it a nice strong plant. Now, if you've got slightly less elaborately tall seedlings, you might want to half fill the soil before you pop them in, but that's not the case with what I have here. So we're just going to do it this way. And I've actually overfilled this a little bit for his big long root there. And this mix I'm just using here is just more of my seed starting mix. I just keep on using it and they are all good. So we wanna pop them on so that their stems are quite deep into the soil. That's totally fine. When I first started doing this, I would just bury their little tiny root in, into the mixture when I, when I moved them along. And that, don't do that. You wanna put them nice and deep. You just don't want the soil touching their leaves. But so long as it's not touching their leaves, you're totally fine to go ahead and bury their stem quite deep. So let's look at what I do with the tomatoes next. So with the tomatoes, I like to pop them on into these little individual cardboard pottles. You can also use plastic, but because my tomatoes are not gonna go from something this size straight out to the garden, I like to use something that's gonna minimize how many times their roots are gonna get disturbed. So this pot here can be planted directly into the next size pot. I don't have to pull the tomato plant out of it. So that's what I like to do with my peppers and my tomatoes and my things that are gonna be babied inside and under shelter for a longer period of time than the greens. So it's the same concept as with anything else you're going to very gently take out each individual seedling. And tomatoes in particular, you want to make sure you get them nice and deep in the pot. Because they really like to be snugged down into their little pot 
and it actually encourages them to make roots all along the stem so you grow a really nice, strong plant. So we're gonna pop that little tomato and see I've buried him nice and deep into the soil. It's not touching the leaves and then he can grow on until he's ready to go into the next size pot. Whereas with the bok choy, they're gonna go straight from this size pot out into the garden. When you're doing your seedlings, which you've probably started in late winter or very early spring, you always have to balance the warmth you need for your seedlings to actually germinate and the light that they need to grow well. So it's always a challenge. So for example, here, I have two tomatoes that I potted up um, maybe 10 days ago. And this one here, so they're from the same tray at the same time. This one, I had the space uh, to keep him inside under my supplement lights. And this one stayed outside. So he had good light, but not warmth. And this one had slightly less good light, but lots of warmth. And this one is quite significantly further ahead than the other one. So they're both gonna be fine. They're both gonna grow. They're both gonna make great tomato plants, but those are the choices you have to toss up when you're deciding where your seedlings are gonna go. And the other thing is space. I don't have enough space inside in my growing area to have every single tomato inside. And I doubt you will either because once they go from a little area into a big area, you suddenly need a lot more space. So you've just got to decide where they're all going to go, but ultimately they're all going to be fine. What I like to use once my seedlings have moved on into their next phase is one of these handy little watering bottles. Well, the bottle is just a recycled bottle and the top you can just get from most garden centers. It's a really great, easy way to water your seedlings once they're at that slightly stronger point. And I like them because I can have different things in different bottles. So in here, I've got a little bit of my fish fertilizer, which I like to pop on my seedlings as soon as I've taken them into their new pots to help them with the shock and just once a week maybe just to give them a little top up. So those are a really easy, easy to store, easy to grab, easy to know what you're doing because they've got different colors to keep your seedling, your seedlings watered and happy. And it is just a great tip to keep them moving forward out into your garden eventually. That is how I move my seedlings from where they started as seeds onto their next stage. It's not too tricky. Plants are pretty resilient, so just give it a go and see what happens. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you'll see that I have changed my garden uh, fencing system here. Um, it's only half working out, but we will see how that goes as the season progresses. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching.